Glucose is the main source of energy production in our body. Normal blood glucose levels should be between 60 to 140 mg per deciliter to supply cells of the body with their required energy. Glucose is absorbed by the intestines into the bloodstream to distribute throughout the body. Excess glucose is stored in the form of glycogen within the liver and muscle tissue. A good balance between hormones of the pancreas, including insulin and glucagon, intestinal and adrenal hormones, is required to maintain a healthy glucose level in blood. Insulin and glucagon are the two most important hormones in regulating blood glucose. Each of these hormones have opposite actions. Insulin, secreted by the pancreatic beta cells, lowers the blood glucose levels, whereas glucagon, secreted by the pancreatic alpha cells, increases the blood glucose levels. Insulin decreases blood glucose by the following mechanisms. It promotes glucose uptake by the cells, especially in the muscle and fat tissue. It also reduces the production of new glucose by the liver. In addition, insulin promotes glycogen production in the liver using glucose. Through these mechanisms, insulin reduces blood glucose level to a normal after a meal. By contrast, glucagon has the opposite of these actions, and its main job is to maintain a healthy blood glucose level between meals. Diabetes is a condition characterized by elevated blood glucose levels than normal. There are two main types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes usually starts before the age of 20. It is an autoimmune condition, characterized by the destruction of the pancreatic beta cells, leading to absolute insulin deficiency. So, these people are dependent on lifelong exogenous insulin. Type 2 diabetes, which is the most common type, appears during adulthood. It is characterized by a combination of peripheral insulin resistance, and inadequate insulin secretion by pancreatic beta cells, leading to relative insulin deficiency. In insulin resistance, cells do not respond to insulin as in normal individuals. So, their glucose uptake will be impaired. As a result, glucose will build up in the blood, leading to hyperglycemia. For type 2 diabetes to occur, both insulin resistance and inadequate insulin secretion must exist. For example, all overweight individuals have insulin resistance, but diabetes develops only in those who cannot increase insulin secretion sufficiently to compensate for their insulin resistance. The etiology of type 2 diabetes involves a combination of environmental and genetic factors. Major risk factors for type 2 diabetes include age greater than 45 years, sedentary lifestyle, high calorie intake, obesity, Family history of type 2 diabetes High blood pressure High blood cholesterol History of gestational diabetes in women And polycystic ovarian syndrome Many patients with type 2 diabetes are asymptomatic and the disease remains undiagnosed for many years. Classic symptoms of diabetes include polyuria or increased urination, polydipsia or increased thirst, polyphagia or increased hunger, and weight loss. Other symptoms that may suggest hyperglycemia include blurred vision, lower limb paresthesia, lack of energy, poor wound healing, and frequent infections. Long-term diabetes can lead to several complications. They can be divided broadly into microvascular and macrovascular complications. Three major microvascular complications are diabetic retinopathy, which can lead to adult onset blindness, diabetic nephropathy, which is the leading cause for chronic kidney disease, and diabetic neuropathy, which affects the peripheral nerves. Macrovascular complications increase the risk of heart attack, stroke, and peripheral vascular disease. Lifestyle changes are the first-line treatment of type 2 diabetes. These include regular exercising, low-calorie diet, quitting smoking, and weight loss. If these changes are unable to provide a considerable improvement, anti-diabetic drugs are indicated. Since type 2 diabetic patients are not completely lack of insulin, initially they do not require exogenous insulin. Metformin is the first-line drug in the medical therapy of type 2 diabetes. In addition, other anti-diabetic drugs can also be used in combination with metformin. However, as the disease progresses, pancreas gradually loses its ability to secrete insulin. Ultimately, 
These patients will also require exogenous insulin to maintain a healthy blood glucose level.